Hello, I'm Graham Fitch, coming to you today from Steinway Hall in London. I'm going to be talking about control of tone in loud and soft playing. And this goes with my article in Pianist Magazine, issue number 82. Just to give you a little bit of notice, you may hear noises in the background, various drilling and construction noises, which uh, I'm afraid are beyond our control. We can't do anything about that. So do excuse that if you hear it. One of the hardest things to do at the piano is to keep good quality of sound in the extremes of the dynamic ranges. So that goes for the fortissimo. I'm sure we've all heard how fortissimos and triple fortissimos degenerate into cacophonous banging sounds. Um, so I'm going to look a little bit about how we can keep our sound rounded and of good quality. I'm going to start off talking about um, soft playing, because that's another area where sound really loses its quality. I'm talking about pianissimo or triple pianissimo. Now in both these examples, it depends on responding to the key bed. Now in the loud example, if I play uh, a chain of, of chords, let's um, come up with this from Rachmaninoff's C-sharp minor prelude, the, the last section. It's all pretty loud. Um, and that goes on for page and a half. It's pretty big playing. Now, it's very easy for that to, first of all, for me to get tired and tight by two or three bars, and also for the sound to become clangy. What we need to do when we're playing fortissimo is to respond to the bottom of the key the moment we sense it. Now, the bottom of the key is the place where the key, <laughs> the key won't go any further. So let me show you. Now, you wouldn't see anything, but the moment I sensed that I'd got to the bottom of the key, I switched off the effort. So it's effort followed by instantaneous release. The release is as quick as this. That's the release. So I can be holding onto that chord and there's nothing going on in my body at all except just resting there. Now when I practice something loud like that, what I've got to do is to practice in that moment of release. Ever release. Again, I feel a little frustrated that you can't see what I'm doing, but I can assure you what I'm doing is, uh, I can't use the word relaxing, because if I were to relax, I'd have fallen off the keyboard, but I'm releasing the effort. That's really, really, really important in loud playing. As is the way I go, go down into the keyboard. If I land from a height, I'm not gonna do it because I can't stand the sound this makes, uh, but if I land from a height, I'm going to produce all sorts of extra percussion effects from the action of the piano and I'm, I've got no control over how my chord ends up sounding or my octaves or whatever it may be. Uh, I, okay, you've persuaded me, I will demonstrate that. That is a seriously unpleasant noise for those of you that are sitting in this, this studio. What I need to do is to have my fingers in contact with the key and then to use um, energy from my upper body. I don't know if you could see what I was doing there. I was pushing backwards as though I were trying to push the piano through the wall. And again, responding to the bottom of the key by switching off. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about loud playing in a minute, but let's go to an example of soft playing where I also have to respond to the bottom of the key. Now, one of the big faults in soft playing um, is people not going to the bottom of the key. Let me just give you an illustration from Chopin's beautiful trio section um, of the Funeral March Sonata, where I will not go to the bottom of the keys deliberately. What you get there is something that is very moth-eaten. It's, it's uh, hollow, it's uh, slippery, it's got holes in it. Um, and I risk notes not sounding. On some pianos, this is a very sensitive Steinway, so 
the notes have sounded for me, but I wasn't aiming to the bottom of the key, therefore I didn't get the focus that I need in the sound. Now let me show you again, properly, <laughs> where I will send the keys down all the way to the bottom and connect to the key beds. I feel that I'm already in the keys before I play. And I'm very much in contact with the key bed. I'm not pushing, but I'm aware of the sensation of the wood or the felt or whatever it is that's underneath the key. Um, I'm very aware that I'm feeling that. For those of you that have problems controlling your pianissimos, one thing you can do in your practice is, this is a very powerful way of improving your pianissimo, play the key, play the note with the level of sound that you want, and then just a little bit of contact afterwards. Feel the bottom of the key, release, feel it, feel it. So I'm putting the key down and then just afterwards, just giving it a tiny, tiny, tiny little, I hesitate to use the word squeeze, it's, it's a contact with the key bed. And after a while, this will glue you to the bottom of your key. So I've got, I get a focused sound there. While it's very soft, it's also very focused, a little bit like uh, if you were to take the, a magnifying glass to the sun and you can focus it into a very, very uh, powerful little beam of light. Now, coming back to the um, loud playing, how to, how to really keep uh, good sound in loud playing. When we see fortissimo or triple fortissimo, we tend to think, don't we, as pianists, that we've got to play every note equally loud, which would be a big mistake. And that's where the, the, the cacophony comes in. Let me give you, again, I apologize to Rachmaninoff for what I'm about to do to the climax of his elegy. But I'm going to now play all components equally loud, and it will sound horrible. <laughs> can't go on, that's so dreadful. What I need to do is to recognize that I've got an extremely powerful bass note down there, which if I don't do anything else, that's already still fortissimo, isn't it? I'm not doing anything else and we're hearing that. I've got a melody on the top. I've got middles. Did you hear what I did with my middles there? My middle uh, component, back to the three layer texture again. I can start this very much softer what I did there and emerge probably to a single forte by the second bar by the way hold the pedal down for two bars there don't change the pedal on the second bar even though it's not ex expressly marked that way it's what, what Rachmaninoff means so tops less in the middle you hear less in the middle um, when it comes to my right hand again I've got an octave with a, a chord in the middle. I've still got to voice that to the top. And I don't think, oh, I've got to make as much sound as I possibly can. I know, I'll play everything equally loud. It produces a horrible sound. Uh, let me move to the big tune in, in Chopin's um, G minor ballade, the big tune that we wait for from the very beginning. Um, now, again, three-part texture, bass node that lasts through the pedal for the whole bar. Accompaniment, or not, not accompaniment, more middle. Now I can generate quite a little bit of um, excitement from that middle part if I start it rather softly. So I play this fortissimo, now less. Did you notice like I swelled as I came to the middle of the, of the left hand? Now on the, in the right hand again, top note you hear my tops so I'm layering my sound um, very important that we know how to do that we can practice this playing the top right hand note from the octave together with the thumb in the left hand 
See, that's already pretty strong, isn't it? You'd agree, that's pretty strong already. I'm playing nothing of the rest of it. Mezzo forte in the middle. I hope you've got the idea there that fortissimo does not mean everything on an equal level. I'm still layering my sound. Come back in part two, and I'm going to be looking at how the pedal affects piano texture, um, especially in, in loud and soft playing here. But I can't really do a series on tone without talking about the pedal. So please do join me in my next part of this lesson.